Welcome to Build Your Best Business. I'm your host, Eric Holtzkoff. Build Your Best Business focuses on the entrepreneurial journey. What does it take to successfully grow, start, manage, exit a business? Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, sort of. So today, our guest is sort of me, but not really. It's <laughs> Natalie and Whitney. We're doing. A, we're going to do a show about just business in general, like the entrepreneurial journey, what it takes to, to make a business work successfully. So I had uh, Natalie and Whitney go through my prior ink columns, some that I had written back in the day, and they picked one for us to talk about today, which I thought was kind of interesting. Natalie chose this one, so we may have to get into the psychology <laughs> about why she thought oh this boy. would be a good one. We'll be here for a while. Yeah. So we're, we're going to talk about four signs you are sabotaging your own success. Yeah, I thought we were going to use that topic to talk about other people. <laughs> oh, no, no. We are absolutely talking about Oh, about us. Or oh, you all. Well. Not me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's my show. I, I, I can't, you know, okay. just do that. So four signs you're sabotaging your own success. You know, one, one of the things when people start a business is that they are worried about what? What are they worried that's going to happen to the business? Hashtag failure. It's going to fail, right? I and mean, it's always the thing everybody talks about is, oh, the business is going to fail. That's their big fear. But the crazy thing is, you know, your business, it, it could be successful. And really the sabotaging your own success gets into that. A lot of times I walk into companies that uh, are doing things that are kind of preventing them from succeeding. So the first one which is going to be an interesting one for me <laughs> to kind of hear. And I really do want to know, Natalie, why you chose this one. So, um, okay. you You're don't, first. <laughs> you don't make changes. You're sabotaging your own success by not making changes. Hmm. So in what way have you seen, cause you guys do social media and video and content and what are some things you see people do that, that they're not changing? Well, I think with social media, the biggest thing is people not wanting to get on board because they're skeptical if it works in the first place. And that's something that we've run into just a couple of times. People thinking, is this really going to be worth it to put the money and the time into it if it's just a passing fad? But it's not. And I think that's pretty clear now, five, six, seven years into Facebook being a big marketing tool, is that this is here to stay, at least for the foreseeable future. And you can't just think oh, it'll go away, oh, give it some time, oh, people will start to go back to newspapers and TV and ads like that. This is where people are. They are online. They live a lot of their lives online, and you need to accept that and get it to be part of your marketing strategy. Well, I heard somebody say at a conference that you would never say in today's times, do you have a telephone strategy? Yeah. Because, <laughs> right. of course, there's, you're going to call on the telephone or use the telephone. And there are those people who think it's going to go away or it's going to be, it's a passing fad. And, and I, I asked them, I said, so back in the day, so these may be older people, mm -hmm. you know, when telephones became a thing and your parents said, Oh, I'm not going to talk to you on the telephone. I, you're going to have to come still see me. Like that's not accepting the fact that there's been this change. Yeah. And if you want to interact with people and you want to get them to come to your company and understand what you're doing, it, it, it's not about, being at the top of the search engine lists. It's yeah. not about any of that kind of stuff. It's about sharing your story and educating. And that's a change in general. Like if you think about the way that we were taught around businesses, we were taught to put the story into the business, like everything was about the business. And you guys, the experience you see is that it's not when the business uh, social media tweets as much or share something as it is the individuals. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say we, um, when you talked about change and SEO, um, we talk about Quora a lot, which if you don't know where Quora is, um, Eric, it's Eric's fault. He got me on to Quora, <laughs> but it's basically where people will go on there and ask questions and then you can answer them. So how do you communicate that you're an expert in your field or you answer a question about it? So I actually saw today in my email, it came across and someone posted the question. They said, I've spent a chunk ton of money on SEO for the past five to six months. Nothing's working. How long should I give it? And someone responded, well, step number one is fire SEO <laughs> expert. <laughs> right. um, so I would even add on to that, you know, when you, and I'm pretty sure your article, if I know you, you get into this, but part of the change is knowing when to change. Like yeah. how do you give it enough time? Okay. You took the change, but maybe it changed again. Like going back to social media, 
you have to make the decision to get on social media, but then you have to make the decision to flow as social media changes. Yeah. So a um, couple of years ago, it was very article heavy. And now it's very video heavy. Mm -hmm. So if you're still posting an article all the time, like if that's all your social media is, then you need to change that. Yeah, I, I noticed, uh, you know, the time pop thing on Facebook came up the other day and it was a text up. It was something that I had put up as a text update from 2009. <laughs> and of course, then that's what you did. You know, yeah. it was like a little two line and it was I had just hung uh, Christmas lights on the house. And I hadn't died, right? I think that's what I, what I put up on Facebook. And today, I would have certainly done that with a picture or yeah. you know something. Of you hanging off the roof, <laughs> right? Or the or the yes. results of my activities. It's yes. just a, a big change because I was like, well, I'm not sharing that status because that's really boring. It's yeah. two lines. But <laughs> right. that that year, it got a lot of play because mm -hmm. that's why those things come back up in your timeline. Is that it's something that was successful before and they're reminding you of it, right? Uh, yeah. So that that change and knowing that marketing, social media, some of these things where like you pick an accounting package or you pick an, a way that you're doing your operations, you don't really change those. You, you perfect them, you mm -hmm. make improve them, make them more efficient. But when you're thinking about outreach, that is, it's really changing dramatically. Mm -hmm. like, when we talk about and do things for my brand, you know, we're looking at something new every couple of months. Now mm -hmm. it's, it's the same content, we may just be sharing it in a different way. Mm, right. So you, you can't set it and forget it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, a, that's a problem. But it does lead into, you said that, you did, it's like you read the article or something. <laughs> <I don't> so. <laughs> Maybe. So, so number one is you're not changing quick, you're not making changes at all. You yeah. don't make changes. So you've been running your business the same way for this many years and it's always worked. Mm. And if your SEO is not working, that's because SEO is not working. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so you need to call us because <laughs> you either need new content or yes. you need to create a social media strategy that's going to actually drive people to your site. Because you know what? They're going to click on your site last. They're going to look yeah. at everything, everywhere yes. else. They're going to go look at your social media. They're going to read articles about you. And then eventually they're going to click on your website because of course your website's going to say wonderful, rosy things about you. It's mm -hmm. going to be your best foot forward why would I trust that? I want to see what else I can find about you or what you're saying and see if I agree with it. Right. So it's really one of the last places people visit. 60 to 70% of their decisions made before they visit your website and your website's either going to push them over or it's going to prevent them from, from uh, moving forward. So the next one yes. is you change <laughs> courses too quickly. <laughs> Mine blown. <laughs> <laughs> so you're changing your courses too quickly. So I, so there are different rules for different things when it comes to content and social media and even sort of internal tactics within a company, it takes six to nine months to start seeing if something's going to work or not. Right. Yeah. And you, you can't go off and tweet once or, yeah. you know, and, and I mean, I hear of you guys, you have contracts, you'll have somebody come in for social media and they, they'll be on for like a month or two. Yeah. Uh, I think it's not working. Incorrect. Right. And yes. even those of you that believe in SEO, your SEO expert told you <laughs> it was going to take six to nine months yeah, to see the yeah. results. And part of that is just the barrier of, you just had to push past the waiting, right? Mm -hmm. The waiting is the hardest part. It is. Thank you, Tom Betty. That's the truth. <laughs> um, May he rest in peace. Yes. Um, love Tom. <laughs> but... So when we when we do that and we go to an, an agreement, we meet with someone, we let them know, hey, just so you know, this is a it's a brand new thing, right? Like you often equate it to a bank. You don't put five dollars in a bank for six months and then wind up with a million dollars. Takes a little while to yeah. get there. It's very much the same. You are making an investment, mm -hmm. and but even still, even when we go through that and we talk and we say, hey, just so you know, we like to give this six to nine months. And that's when, you know, our agreements are sometimes, you know, it's, well, it wasn't fast enough or, but you, you have to, you have to give it time. It's just yeah. the fact of the matter. And I think that for us too, because we can see the analytics and we can see the data that's coming in from your post for the past three days, five days, week, month, we have a good idea of what's happening and what's working and what's not. When you're on the outside and you don't get that data every single day, yes, the waiting can be difficult, but you have to trust that the people that you put in charge of your social media or whatever you've outsourced are professional and know what they're doing and know that your wait time, while it seems long to you, is 
pretty normal in yeah. terms of what you're expecting to get out of it. Well, and that's an important point. I was going to ask how you're measuring success along the way to that six to nine months. So you're looking at individual posts, individual, you know, things that are successful. Right. And the problem with the business owner is <clears> they're <throat> looking for social media and marketing to convert to sales. Mm -hmm. right. So they're like, they're oh, we haven't seen a new sale. Mm -hmm. Well, people... In today's world, I have to be <laughs> aware of you after 20 times. Mm -hmm. I don't even know you exist. Like, I don't pay attention to your social media. I don't look at your tweet. I don't, I, I may have seen it. I see it subliminally. Like, you might pass by. How many times have you seen like a Facebook ad and finally you click on it? Yeah, right? exactly. You finally decide you're going to take an action. So, each one of those occurrences, knowing that at least somebody saw something, it's better than having done nothing. Mm -hmm. So, if I got up today and I didn't share anything over social media, well, then no one saw me. Mm -hmm. Right. That's very true. Yeah. And if I share something over social media and I think people may not understand either, which is one reason we don't like to redo content is that there's that burn, right? Mm -hmm. You put something out there right. and then it sits and it sort of grows and grows and grows. And so you're creating all these little, you know, these seeds of things mm -hmm. that are growing and eventually you have something to harvest. But if you think about a six month window and the amount of times my, I might see something on LinkedIn or Facebook or Quora, whatever, I have to see your company, see who yeah. you are 20 times. That's going to take a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Regrettably, you're not that interesting to your customers. <laughs> and they have to trust you. We talk about trust a lot. Right. Um, there's so much content coming at us, you know, today. And if when you go on and you like a page, I don't want to just be bombarded with sales pitches. Mm -hmm. um, my, you know, we go. Back oh, so to you that. shouldn't do what I I talked to a potential <laughs> customer this week, and they said that they go through LinkedIn, they reach out, and when the person accepts their their uh, invitation, yes. the next thing they do is tell them what they do. <laughs> <laughs> so That's don't exactly, do that. Exactly, I was like, <laughs> he was like, I've, yeah, I've done that like 30 or 40 times. And I'm like, so you have 30 or 40 people who really hate you. Yeah. And that's, it's 30 to 40 people at first. Right. And then by the time they connect with all of their friends, their peers, their colleagues, it could be 300 people <laughs> that don't that's, want anything to do with your like, business. That's basically like, hi, 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 Whitney. <laughs> hi, Natalie. So wow. nice to meet you. Wow. I'm glad we're friends. By the way, I'm moving next weekend. Can you help? Right. Or can I borrow fifty dollars? Yeah, <laughs> like that's essentially <laughs> or what you've give just me fifty dollars. Yeah. Like buy something from yeah. me. You know, You're like, <laughs> you can't. Oh, no, the, the person you avoid at the cocktail party. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our first one is you don't make changes. Yes. Which is a lot of and B two B companies are the worst right now. They think they don't have to do marketing. They've never done it before. They don't understand why search is not working for them any longer. I just see this over and over again. Like you got to change. You can't do it the same way. And when we talk about content and content being king, it's not that beautifully written prose on your website. It's the content you're sharing in other places. Like what's the bait you're using to bring people back to your website? The second is that you're changing courses too quickly. So you don't give things enough time. So uh, that's the squirrel problem. Squirrel? <laughs> Yeah. Something else. Squirrel, <laughs> squirrel, which is really less squirrel and more like frustration. Like you just get frustrated too quickly. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you've ever said, I tried that Twitter thing before, <laughs> then you might fall into the second category. Yes. So <laughs> we're going to go to a commercial break and when we get back. We're going to talk about the other two. So you're listening to Build Your Best Business. I'm joined today by Natalie Fitzgibbons. Yeah. Is that right? Fitzgibbons? <laughs> or Whitney. <laughs> Whitney. <laughs> or Whitney. I've been to call it a lot of Whitney things today. Mendoza <laughs> <laughs> from Briller Media. We're talking about four ways you may be sabotaging your own success. We'll be back in just a minute. about Lightering Works? So Lightering Works is a company that helps other businesses in one of two ways. Okay. So your company is either growing and you're not exactly sure how to keep up. So you need to scale operations, maybe raise some money, those kind of things. So growing too fast. Growing too fast. Okay. Or, yeah, growing too fast. You got okay. kind of structural, you walk in every day, there's a fire. Uh, you've been doing it longer than three years or a thousand days and you still feel like you can't step away from the business and take a vacation. So we help companies on that side. So sort of operational support, looking at their financing, seeing if there's a way that we can help them you know, get to the next level. 
or you're a company that's not doing any marketing at all. So you are maybe stalled. Your business has gotten to a certain level. You make a certain amount of money every year, but you've never gotten above that. And we come in and build marketing structure. So both of them are operational at the end of the day. It's about creating a process and a way to approach it that's strategic. Uh, It's that uh, owners don't often know how to do both of those. So they're really good at sales, which means they may need operational structure because they're out signing more customers than they know what to do with. Or they've built a beautiful product that's the best kept secret. And so they need somebody to come in and help them market that product. And so that's the kind of businesses we look for. We come in as a stopgap and we work with a company for somewhere around 12 to 18 months typically, uh, solve those problems for them and leave them better than we found them. And we're back. You're listening to Build Your Best Business. I'm your host, Eric Holtzkoff. Build Your Best Business focuses on the entrepreneurial journey. And today we're talking about ways that you may be sabotaging your own success. This is from an ink column that I wrote a little while ago, but all of them still stand true. There are kind of four ways that you can see that. You know, a lot of entrepreneurs and small business owners are worried about failure. And that's what they talk about. But you can also be successful and as people become successful, that's often the time that I see these things enter into their psyche. So they start to see some success. They're unwilling to change because it's worked a certain way for a certain period of time, which mm-hmm. is the first one we discussed, or they change courses too quickly. You know, they try something else. They want to try that. They're adding fuel to the fire and they're not really doing it well, which plays into my third thing that you may be doing to uh, sabotage your own success you aren't setting any goals. <laughs> I mean, how do you know where you're going? I know. Yeah, that's a good point. But I think that... But that sounds like somebody who sets New Year's resolutions and then doesn't follow um, them. No, I was actually going to say... And now I totally lost track. <laughs> <laughs> my thoughts. My so thank you. Um, you were saying that sometimes businesses are afraid to fail. Yeah. And so do you think that not setting goals is a way of protecting Ooh. the small business owner from being let down if something doesn't happen? That, that is a good good way to look at it. So the thought that if I set the goal and it's too big mm-hmm. and we don't reach it, then I've disappointed and people yeah. don't know. But, you know, we, we talk about setting BHAGs big, hairy hmm, goals, right? (laughs) Because you want something that's out there that you're like, that's a big goal. Mm -hmm. Aren't you allowed to say that on a podcast? I could, but you know. We're keeping it G I'm trying to be nice. There's so much going on in the news. I can yell beep. Yeah, so so let's say, yeah, the, the thing is that you've got like these goals that you're setting and if you don't have something that allows you to know where you are, then how do you know what you've done? Mm-hmm. And and what I see more of a problem with this is not in I didn't reach the goal. I I've not I don't have a way to look back and see how successful I've been. Okay. So as an entrepreneur or small business anything, like even when you're doing something personally, if you're not establishing goals, not keeping up with where you are mm-hmm. on that status, then you can start to self-sabotage in your talk and be like, oh, I'm no good at that. Yeah. Or I haven't done anything, mm-hmm. you know, where you may have gone from zero sales to several hundred thousand dollars in sales. Mm-hmm. It's not enough yet to pay yourself or to do the things you want to do, but you had zero sales 12 yeah. months ago. So what are those things that you want to put in place? And the interesting thing about it too is having people who are working with you, if they don't know what the goals are, they don't know what they're driving towards either. Yeah. Right. I think that part of the reason that I chose this article was because I'm relatively new to like job market and having a job, you want to look for companies that are trying to avoid these mistakes Yeah. and setting goals. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can get into that in a minute. <clears throat> And I think we can start asking we what changes goals. they've made. <laughs> we have goals. <laughs> have them written down. <laughs> and so I think that being aware of these things when regardless of your age, because there's somebody in every age bracket that looks is looking for a new job or a new opportunity, right. um, being able to identify these subtle mistakes, even in an interview or when you're looking online, is important in finding a job that you want. So I guess that's kind of why I chose this article, because I think that it relates really well to people my age who are just entering the job market out of college or people who are looking to change their careers. Well, and then, then interestingly, the way you say that, those could all be, you know, the interviewer always asks you a question, mm-hmm. you know, like, 
what do you have? What do you want to know from us? Yeah. Right? So these can be all turned into those types of questions. This being the easiest, like what yeah. are your goals for next year mm-hmm. you know, as a company? What are you doing? That's going to make you be successful. And by the way, how can I contribute to those goals? Cause that's, that's the big disconnect that I see in the workplace around this millennial workforce. And mm-hmm. I say that in quotes <laughs> is that it's not that, it's not that they are as fickle as you think they are. Mm-hmm. They really, they're used to, I wrote another article around uh, saving the princess. Like millennials drew, they, they grew up with video games mm-hmm. and you played, I played Mario growing up, right? You mm-hmm. wanted to save the princess. That yeah. was your goal. So when you start the game, you need to know what the goal is. Mm-hmm. And if you're in a company and they're like, no, just do your job. You know, that was the days of old. Mm-hmm. You, know, you come in at nine, you leave at five, you turn this widget and we're not going to tell you why. Yeah. People don't do that. I that's think not that's purposeful. Like the nicest assessment of millennials at work that I've ever <laughs> heard thus far. And being in that category is nice to hear because I don't think it's always that millennials are not looking for quality work and they're not looking to contribute. But you're right. I do want to see when I go on for an interview, not that I'm entitled by any means, but I do want to know that you're going somewhere because if I'm going to invest in your future and you're just kind of floundering, Floating, that right. means that I'm going to flounder too. And I can't afford to do that. So I like that. Well, no, That's I mean, nice it's absolutely you. true. It's the, it's the big disconnect. It's yeah. that, you know, millennials, they, we say you've been coddled <clears throat> and, you know, they've been given awards and, but they've been given goals. They've mm-hmm. been given things to ap- accomplish and the nine to five work day of old, yeah. the blue collar, the factory, the way that work is based was you show up at this time, mm-hmm. you leave at this time, you take your lunch at this time, you do the following thing. And I'm not going to tell you why yeah. you don't need to know why. And that's no way. No one does that anymore. Like mm-hmm. they want their work to, we realize work, you know, life can be short mm-hmm. and it needs to be purposeful. So knowing those goals and if you have a company that doesn't have them, how do you know what you're working towards? How yeah. do you measure success? And you should just do it for yourself. Like each passing milestone becomes a way for you to kind of reflect, to look back and, and pat yourself on the back. Because entrepreneurs and small business owners, while they look, you know, all powerful and whatever, are very insecure people. Yeah. You know, they're like, I don't know if I'm doing this right or not. I have no idea. So these are ways for you to kind of reaffirm yourself. So I like it. Yeah, I, that almost made me think of um, Don Draper's the minute that you gain a new client is the minute that you start to lose them. Yes. I think sometimes entrepreneurs feel that way about success. Like, Oh, I've got it. And like you said, going back to the first two points, we feel like we have to protect it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And entrepreneurs are classically journey oriented and not really destination oriented. Mm -hmm. And, And I know this about myself. I love the trip and the travel and, preparing and getting, and then I get there sometimes and I'm like, eh, I'm here. (laughs) I made it. Yeah. Six hours in the car da da da, da, and I made it. Now what am I going to do? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And entrepreneurs, you'll see them get to a plateau within their business and that's where they're like almost uncomfortable, which leads them. It's like we like practice this or something to the fourth way that you could be sabotaging your own success. And that's you take unnecessary risk. So I see this all the time with entrepreneurs who have established businesses that are running well. So they've kind of gone through the journey, they make it to the destination and then they just got to mess something up. (laughs) Like things are just running too smoothly for them. And so they've got to start a new business, you know, a new part of the business. They've got to break something. They, they're almost self-fulfilling in their, um, need to for destruction Hmm. that's interesting yeah i like that point so how do you think how do you what's maybe the most common way that you see businesses do that is it like taking on a new financial commitment that they can't handle like let's say you have a restaurant your restaurant is doing well you finally started to make money turn a profit let's open another yeah they could be opening another location and not be ready to do it in businesses, I see often they're maybe project based. Mm-hmm. So they're running a lot of projects and then they decide, oh, we need to build a product, mm-hmm. right? So something that we're going to sell or they're product based. And all of a sudden now they think they need to sell, you know, projects. Starbucks is an example of this and they've done a good job. They've done a better job than 
you'd think, but like one of the reasons I used to love to walk into a Starbucks is it always smelled so much of coffee. Mm -hmm. So what does a Starbucks smell like now often? Aren't they doing the whole wine cheese thing? No, they smell like their oh. breakfast sandwiches and their yeah, whatever. I because uh, they've got the, and true. they bought these special ovens that supposedly were going to suck all that. But I walk in and I'm like, I don't really smell coffee anymore. I smell like, you know, yeah, bangles that's true. or something. <laughs> I haven't really, really sniffed a Starbucks lately. Yeah. So I, so, I'll have to so I would have predicted that wouldn't have gone as well. But, you know, people like the fact that they can get the pastry yeah. or whatever mm -hmm. while they're there. But it is an example of a, a risk they could take that would potentially be unnecessary. So I see that often. And, and the right way to do it in a business that's, you know, and a Starbucks can afford it. You know, if you're running your little small business and you make some huge mistake, then you start to suck yeah. all the resources to it. So what happens is companies will build these things and they put them underneath the, the mother company. So, and it's this thing that's leaking money and leaking resources and you don't know it. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do something new, if you're that entrepreneur and things have gotten stable and you're bored, don't do that thing within your umbrella company. Set something up separate. Even if you're running it, even if you don't really go incorporate something new, like establish another set of books, a group that's going to take care of it, because you're limiting your exposure okay. to that thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like setting it up on its own, giving it only a little bit of money or a little bit of resources, because when it gets all tied into the bigger part of the company, it gets hidden. And yeah. you don't know, hey, maybe this isn't working. Mm -hmm. right? So you've got to have similar measures to when you started your original business to make sure that that one's not going to uh, to take the mothership down. Uh, that would almost kind of keep this process of sabotage going. Because, too, if you glump it all together, you can't really measure what's being successful, what's not, where your resource is going, and you can't make goals because you're not really sure what the different pieces yeah, are what's doing. impacting yeah. what. And it's harder to make a decision to get rid of something. Mm -hmm. So when it's not mm -hmm. separate, you see it all as part and parcel and you make up for, oh, well, we're paying for it over here. And you don't know, well, this, wait, no, this is bad. Mm -hmm. Like this mm -hmm. is had its six to nine to 12 month run and it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. Right. <laughs> yeah. So like, how do you keep that separate? So, um, yeah, that it's it's a way to keep those uh, those squirrel moments too that happen with entrepreneurs who are easily distracted. So they want to create something new or do something new. Okay, well I have a quick question for you. Yeah. As like this is the perfect time of the year with holidays, New Year's, everything coming along. If you're doing this and you sense or you find that something's not working but you can't really put your thumb on it what's a good way to because i've seen in fact recently we've experienced you know you working with a company and maybe they've got they've taken on too much mm -hmm. and so instead of just taking one thing off at a time they just say nope we're going to drop everything and just kind of almost go back to the nuts and bolts of it and then build back up from there. So instead of doing that, is there a good way to kind of go back through and say, wait a minute, I think we've got a problem. But instead of just making a drastic assumption or a risk, how do you find out maybe like an area you need to work on? So I, I would tell you anyone who's going to drop everything, it's probably impractical to do that mm -hmm. because... Okay you got so much going on and something's got to be working and whatever, right? So the goal setting is really important. So anything that you're doing in your business that you're not tracking, that there's not a way for you to easily say, this is what it is and how it works. You need to figure out how to put numbers around it. And then you need to prioritize those things. So what sort of first, second, third, fourth, you know, and you can determine that sometimes by just looking at your balance, your financials, mm -hmm. like how much have we spent on it? Yeah. So importance in your personal life and in your business life is always reflected in how much money you spend on it. So if you spend a lot of money on shoes or shirts, Isaac, <clears throat> then <laughs> you may have a priority around that part of your life or your business. So is that really number one, right? Like if I'm spending that much money on my office space or on my equipment or on my whatever, is that number one? Mm -hmm. Or, and can, if it's number one, I better the heck have some goals set to it. Yeah. So, so follow the money. I like it. Follow the money. So you've been listening to Build Your Best Business. <laughs> We've been doing a special show today with Natalie Fitzgibbons yeah. and Whitney Mendoza from <laughs> Brewer Media talking about four ways that you could be sabotaging your own success. Cause it's not always about just failing. Like you could be successful and then you get there and 
sometimes these poor entrepreneurs, they just start to do things <laughs> that keep them from getting to that next level. So join us next time uh, on Build Your Best Business. You can also find us on iTunes and Stitcher and everywhere else that you love to listen to your podcasts. We're on Mondays at nine o'clock. Until then, what are you going to do to build your best business?